Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Accelerate Your Performance podcast. I'm your host, Janet Pilcher. Thanks for having a desire to be your best at work and help your organization achieve success. This podcast is all about actions we can take to improve workplace culture and achieve results. And they're all aligned to our nine principles for organizational excellence. We've known people in positions of power, and many of us have been in positions of power. People in leadership positions have power. You know, teachers have power, police have power, government officials have power, coaches of sports teams have power. What happens when we witness individuals in these positions living double standards or witness them say one thing and then do another? And we feel betrayed, even if it's a simple thing. When we witness our leaders living double standards, it causes our teams to lose enthusiasm and it becomes replaced with pessimism and and distrust. We've all felt this way when we've witnessed people in positions of power act with double standards and we're just simply disheartened by those actions. This topic hit home with me this past week. You know, when I travel, I stay in the same hotels and cities, and you've heard some of those stories. And one hotel is next door to a coffee shop. There's an empty, large lot across the alleyway that has about six, I I would say, no parking signs. I've watched citizens park in no parking zone on the lawn and get towed by the city. And it's the it's kind of the talk of the town a little bit. And at the hotel, they communicate to us, don't park there, you'll get towed. We've watched so many people get towed from that lot. And several weeks ago, I was eating breakfast at the hotel and I saw two police cars parked in the no parking zone. I knew they were parking there for probably a few minutes to run into the coffee shop, let's say, to get a cup of coffee. At first, I thought, eh, what harm is that? And then the picture of citizens' cars getting towed ran through my mind. I thought about the number of times I I have even saw the tow truck come by and how people ran into the coffee shop, you know, giving customers a warning in case it was their car. And then my thoughts turned into thinking, gosh, of all people, the police officers are the ones who shouldn't be violating law. They should be setting a good example. Now, I, I knew that they didn't have negative intentions, but I also realized that they knew they could get away with it. You know, the more I thought about this situation, kind of the worse it got for me. They were not adhering to the law, which is the whole purpose of their jobs to ensure that we are law abiding citizens in the most positive way. And about 15 minutes into my breakfast, I saw the police officers walk across the walk to their car. I wanted to jump up and walk to them and express what I'd been thinking. And then I said, no, I don't think I'll do that. Why? Because they held a higher position of power than I did. You know, I've, I feared the consequence of, of my interaction. I know what those two officers look like now. If I see them apprehending someone for breaking a parking violation, it reinforces that they are do as I say rather than do what I do professionals. You know, and I know that's just not what they want to be. I really feel that's not their intent. Them breaking the law reduces our trust in them. And you know what? It also reduces our trust in the system. When we are leaders in positions of power, people look to us for guidance and direction. They they count on us. When our actions betray their trust, it's difficult to recover. If, If we say one thing and do another, our teams lose enthusiasm. They become suspicious of our actions. Most likely, our teams will not trust we are doing the right things for the organization and doing the right things for them. Here's the most difficult news for leaders to hear. Our teams no longer believe in us when we don't live those standards. Teams are looking to leaders for inspiration. As leaders, we're responsible for showing our teams the way. When we violate our own standards, even if we think the action is small and insignificant, we betray our teams. Back to the police officers for a few minutes. How could they have stayed within the law and, you know, that that they expect of us? Ten yards away from where the police parked was a legal parking space. It was a beautiful day for a 10-yard walk to the coffee shop. Why didn't they choose to park there? Well, they had a position of power and probably knew they could get away with parking in a no parking zone. Just slipped in for a quick, quick cup of coffee. Maybe that didn't cross their minds because maybe it was just a practice that had become a habit for them, a bad habit. Maybe they felt they were different than citizens having to abide by the no parking zone law. 
I don't think that these two officers meant any harm. I want to say that again. In fact, they probably didn't think twice about parking in the no parking zone. And my thoughts then shifted to the senior leaders of the police department. I wonder if they had a set of values and had operationalized those values into standards of excellence. I feel like if they had these standards and the senior leaders lived by them and expected the force to live by them, these two police officers wouldn't have parked in a no parking zone. They would have lived the values of the department. Yes, the officers are responsible for their own behaviors. I believe that they had solid leadership. The thought of parking there wouldn't have crossed their minds. And if it didn't, or if it did, you know, they would have made a different decision. And again, I'm not saying the senior leaders had negative intentions. It's just the practices, the bad habits of practice that have been embedded within the organization because of the lack of the definition of the standards that they all are going to live by, including senior leaders. As I wrapped up my breakfast, I reflected on my town's police department. We did some initial training with a group of police professionals, and they are continuing to work to create their standards of excellence for their department. And over the last year, I've learned that these standards of excellence are core to building the culture of the organization. They're the guide to to live by. And by doing so, we respect each other and have enthusiasm for our work in serving each other and others. As leaders, even the smallest violations make a difference in the way our team thinks about us. Sometimes staying within the framework of the rules, it's simply an inconvenience, and we don't want to. And at times, we don't see the value even of compliance. And if so, we have the responsibility to speak up to our organizations and let them know why. Doesn't mean we're going to get our way, but we have to express why we feel that way rather than just break the rule. If we lead teams and our teams are expected to live in our organizations by following these standards, we as leaders not only live them, we model them every step of the way. Take this week and watch for those times that you live within the standards or guidelines of your organization. Look for when you may go astray and then think about why living the standards is core to building a strong culture. In April and May, we'll be showcasing leaders from healthcare, higher ed, and K-12 education who lead with strong values and high expectations of themselves. Join us on April 20th for Strengthening Rural America Conference or on May 17th and 18th for Destination High Performance Higher Education. To learn more about both of these events, go to studereducation.com slash events. And as always, I thank you for tuning in to Accelerate Your Performance. Please share the podcast and make sure you're subscribed. If you're looking for more resources related to today's episode, head over to studereducation.com slash podcast. I look forward to connecting with you next time as we continue to focus on the nine principles for organizational excellence so that we can be our best at work. Have a great week.